all right we are live um hi everyone thank you for joining in i think we'll just wait for a couple more minutes to make sure that more people don't miss out on the session so we'll just wait for a while uh paul vineet if that's fine with you yeah, yeah, sure. of course, of course. yeah. thank you Um, before we start with the session, I just wanted to tell uh, all the audience who've joined right now, we do have a questions tab. Uh, you can see it on the side of your screen. So in case you guys have any questions throughout the session, please feel free to put it there. Um, we will take almost all the questions. How many ever we can take up those many questions we will take up in the end of the question, uh, in the end of the webinar. And we also have a poll section where we will be putting up polls throughout the webinar. So please do interact with it. Uh, we'll get to know uh, what is your crisis and what exactly you need. So that's how you can interact with us. And there's always a chat option. So yes, these are the few things that I wanted to tell everyone before we begin the webinar. Yeah. If anybody wants to introduce themselves from the attendees, you you have a chat option. You you can introduce yourself in the attendees section, uh, chat section, if that's something you would like to do. Yeah, I mean, that would be great, as we will also know. Yeah. Hi, Venkatesh. Hi, Venkatesh. Let me start by putting something in the chat box. Venkatesh is saying that he'll send in all the questions. Yes, that's exactly what we need. Thank you. I think we can start with the session. Um, we have a couple of people. I'm sure more will join. Um, so yeah, uh, we can start. So hi, everyone. Welcome to another Lead Squared webinar. My name is Kartika, and I will be your host for today. Uh, we have a very exciting session today. It's a sales masterclass on fail-proof sales enablement strategy for the year 2022. And in this session, there are a couple of things that we're going to be looking at, uh, mainly improving the buyer's experience, that is targeting the right buyers and improving engagement, uh, product and culture training, that is aligning the team's work culture for peak performance. We will also be looking at optimizing the sales process, that is using the best tools and technology for efficiency. Last but not the least, we'll also look at managing sales teams effectively. That is remote team management and advanced monitoring. So before we get to all these exciting points that I just noted, uh, I would like to introduce our uh, very exciting, amazing speakers. Uh, we have Ms. Pearl Singh Porwala, who is the Director of Training at Upgrad. Pearl, please tell us a bit about yourself, your journey, and what we can expect from you in this webinar. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining in. Thank you, Kartika, for having me here. So I'm really excited to speak to our audience. Uh, to talk about myself, um, I started my career with Jet Airways, and my core focus at that time was customer service and operations. So I spent a good 10 years in the service sector. And um, during that time, I would always think in my mind that, you know, sales is very tough. Uh, I don't think I'd ever you know, take up sales in my career ever time, anytime in the future. I think customer service is something which is more up my sleeve. Uh, however, um, uh, you know, we say that uh, fate is something which is not in our hands. And 
the thing that you try to run away from the most usually comes by your way. So uh, after I moved out from Jet Airways, I was looking for another opportunity and uh, Abrad came my way. Uh, Abrad is an edtech organization. I'm sure many of you would have heard about us. And at that point of time, we were just starting out uh, six years back and uh, we were, uh, they were looking for people to join the team to you know, start uh, the entire counseling piece, uh, the counseling team, building it from ground up. So I joined them. Uh, initially thought that I'll again be in customer service and working on that front. Uh, however, in a startup environment, you know, you usually are uh, uh, involved in a lot of uh, multiple functions and cross collaboration and everything. And that's when uh, sales came my way. So I've had the opportunity to actually build the entire sales team ground up at a grad. So we started from zero to 100 plus to 200 plus, And now we're, of course, uh, you know, a thousand plus uh, sales team here at a grad. Uh, done with multiple functions over here from sales to training then back to sales and now back to training as well. So uh, in my experience, I did uh, see that, uh, you know, my fright for sales uh, was uh, uncalled for. It, it, it's a tough, it's a tough role. Uh, however, it's very exciting. It's very, very rewarding. If you identify the right ways and the right processes to, you know, enable your team's weight and implement in your day-to-day -day work, uh, I think sales is a very, very rewarding function as well. So in this session today, we're going to talk about all of those uh, sales enablement techniques. And I really hope that uh, all of you have a lot of takeaways from this session. So thank you so much for having me here. Over to you, Vinit, and over to you, Kartika. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Paul. Uh, really looking forward to learning from you. And yes, uh, we have Mr. Vineet Tiwari, who is the director of sales at Lead Squared. Vineet, you have been in a lot of Lead Squared webinars, so this is not new for you. But still, our audience would definitely love to know you a little better. So please tell us a bit about yourself. So hello, everyone. Hi, Kartika. Hi, Paul. Thanks a lot uh, for, for giving another opportunity for a webinar. And, and to you know, get engaged with, with our audience here. Uh, so, so just a quick round of introduction. So, uh, so I'm in sales from last 13 years, and um, sales has been an integral part of my life now. I mean, I so it is difficult for me to imagine okay myself okay without sales. Uh, that, that that's, like, that's how it is. It is now. Uh, I mean, it has become an ingredient in myself now. I mean, I would quote it like that. Uh, so, so starting from you know user. To handling a team, to managing a region, uh, to to managing sales as a process, you know, it's like there has been a lot of you know steps, stages, and challenges, and and uh, so I would also you know, like pick up from the last line of Pearl that sales is very exciting and rewarding, and and I have always felt that, and and it's like that's the reason that uh, it is difficult for me to to correlate myself without sales. So so I'm going to speak here about about how you know uh, it's like. Like how teams can be okay, managed efficiently, it's like how you know improvement in the process can be brought in. So which are the system? I mean, what is the role of you know like people, process, and system into a sales enablement or a process? So, so that's all I'm going to talk about today, and I'm sure it is going to you know help us a lot. I mean, all of us. So, so we have got you know like wonderful uh, speakers. Like, I mean, I'm having Paul here now as a speaker. So, so it's a great honor for me to be to to share the stage with her. So thanks a lot, Pearl, for this. And I think, uh, so, so let us start, Kartika. Yes, definitely. Thank, Thank you so much, uh, you. Vineet and Pearl. So I think we can start with the webinar. But uh, for the people who've joined right now, I've said this before, uh, we do have a question tab on the side of your screen. So please put any questions or doubts that you have throughout the session. We also have polls that we will be putting up throughout the session. So please engage with them. We'd love to hear from you. With that, yes, uh, the presentation has started already. I'm going to hand over this session to the speakers right now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kartika. Um, so we need let's let's get started. I'm sure everyone's really excited to hear, and I'm also really excited to share some more experiences from my side as well. So um, for our audience, as you see, the first slide um, up in front of you is what is sales enablement, right? The idea. When we talk about sales, we talk about our teams, we talk about efficiency, we talk about revenue. These are all the core factors that come in the entire sales uh, bucket that we talk about.
But how do we ensure that we're getting revenue in? How do we ensure that our teams are efficient, they're enabled? So it's a, it's a comprehensive process, it's a comprehensive package. Everything is interlinked with each other. One cannot be done without the other. So the idea is that we need to provide our sales teams with the right kind of training and assets and processes and best practices and tools. All of it together, when they come together, is when we can say that we're able to enable our sales teams to such a great extent that they're able to bring in revenue and business for the organization. That's when we can say that our sales teams are able to contribute towards the growth of any organization, because that is the core function of any sales team to get in revenue and to bring in growth for the organization, right? So which are the four key parameters that we're going to talk about today, which will help you to enable your sales teams? So we're going to talk about hiring and onboarding. We're going to talk about training enablement. We're going to talk about sales cadence and optimizing the process. And then we're going to talk about the right feedback system. So all of these four together is going to be your fail-proof sales enablement strategy. So now let's talk about each of these pointers in detail. So the first one being hiring and onboarding. So when we talk about hiring and onboarding, till you don't have the right kind of people in your teams, it's going to be very difficult to build the environment that you want to create in order to have a very, very highly efficient sales functioning team. So like we say, your first impressions matter. So even from a point of view of a recruiter who's hiring for their sales team and for someone who wants to be part of the sales team, how you present yourself, what are the skill sets that you bring to the table or what are the skill sets a recruiter needs to look for becomes very, very important. So the first thing starts off as a sales recruiter when I'm looking for people to join my team is very, very clearly outlining the job description. Who is it that am I looking for? What are the kind of people that, I, that I'm looking for, right? And defining the recruitment process. So setting very clear and achievable expectations for the individual who's coming on board, who's going to be a part of your team. Because if there's a gap in the expectation setting, then your employees are not going to be very happy with you. So it becomes very, very important that the foundation, the basics of starting to build your teams is very, very strong. So once you have the individual and once you've identified the right individual, the individual has joined your team, you've started building your sales team. What are the initial things that you must do to ensure that the individual is going to be part of your team, the employee is well settled? So you should have a very strong onboarding program where you're introducing the individual to your company, the vision, mission, the growth strategies, because still an employee, till an employee does not feel proud of the organization that he's part of, he's not going to be able to sell the product very, very confidently. Sales at the end of the day is taking your product and putting it out there in front of the customer and convincing the customer why that product is the best fit for him or her. Until you as a salesperson do not believe in your product, you're not going to be able to do justice in the conversation that you're having with your customer. So it starts from the basics where you understand about the organization, you understand about the work culture, you understand how the organization is going to grow and what are your opportunities to grow with that organization, right? So that is the first part with regards to hiring and onboarding. Vineet, is there anything that you would like to jump in yeah. and add so, your thoughts on this piece? So, so Pearl, I mean, thanks a lot. This was I mean, really, really insightful. And uh, so, so the first process out of, you know, it's like building a really empowered team. The first process is hiring, I mean, right hiring, basically. So, I mean, so this is the most challenging step, actually. I mean, so so I have also you know, came, came across that, that, you know, out of all the four steps that we have, this is the most challenging and it's like most critical step. It's because this is where, you know, it's like entry is happening. So, so entry has to be okay, very correct. So also, if you could, you know, like help us from the audience like perspective as well. Uh, Super, I wanted to you know uh, it's like one line on how do we ensure, you know, that, that the fitment from both sides is right, that we are able to get the right candidate into. Right. So I would link this point to the earlier point that I mentioned is when you're creating your job description, mm -hmm. very clearly defining the key roles and responsibilities of the individual. 
So when you are in an interview and when you are chatting with the individual uh, who has applied for that position, you are very clear about when, what are the expectations from that person um, in terms of uh, job requirements, what will be the key areas of responsibility, understanding that individual, his background or her background, where they come from, um, very strong communication skills. I would say that in today's day and age, communication is the key to master anything. So if you have a very strong uh, communication background and you're able to articulate yourself really, really well, that is a very, very strong piece because that is something that I really look for uh, when I'm looking for an individual to join my team. Good, good, strong communication skills and written skills as well. Nowadays, we have seen that people do not give a lot of importance to written communication skills. However, we forget that uh, at least 50 to 60 percent of our interaction with our customers is via email. So it, when you write a shoddy email, you're not giving a very good representation of your company and of yourself. And if me as a customer does not have faith in the individual interacting with me, I'm not going to have faith in the product as well. Hence, at the time of hiring, it becomes very important to evaluate these small, small skill sets, which in the longer run become a very strong asset uh, for you as a salesperson and for managers in their sales teams, because then that one piece is something that you don't have to really worry about. So just ensuring that the people come with the right kind of attitude. Uh, like I said, it's uh, many people are scared of sales, right? And um, they get very apprehensive to talk to a customer in terms of um, basically articulating what the product is all about. So at that point of time, if we are able to identify the right kind of attitude that the person has towards his work, towards the product, the amount of effort an individual is willing to put in to achieve a sale, because it's nine times no and maybe a one time yes. So how perseverant, how perse uh, very perseverance, I would say, is a very, very critical skill. So evaluating all of these skill sets becomes very important at the time of hiring. True, true, so true. Thanks a lot, Tamil Paul, for bringing this. Got it. So um, let's move on to the next point where we are talking about training enablement. Again, a very, very important step for uh, in order to build the foundation of your sales team. Because when we hire people, uh, you will have people who come with sales experience and you may also be giving opportunities to people who are complete freshers and are just starting their careers um, after completing their education. So when you're designing your training programs, it becomes very important to identify the kind of audience or the kind of people that you have onboarded, what their past experiences are, and try and customize your training programs as far as possible to benefit people from various backgrounds, right? Um, when you're designing the training program, again, it's very important to give importance to two to three key factors. One will be your product. So which, what, whichever industry that you're based out of, whatever your product is, which you're going to be offering to your customers, having a very comprehensive training uh, program or a training module, which is designed around the product. So your, it's our uh, aim as trainers to ensure that any employee or any trainee who's part of uh, the sales team is well aware of what the product is all about what are the usps what are the differentiating factors it becomes nowadays you will find multiple companies offering the same product but what differentiates your company from the rest of the competition becomes a very very important point so ensuring that people are aware your trainees your sales teams are aware about these differentiators so very strong product training is what would be important a second part would be the processes any sales um, uh, process is incomplete without the steps that the customer has to go through or the steps that your sales representative has to take the customer through. It could be right from the time that the customer is exploring your product. The second stage is where you're having a conversation and informing them about it. Third is you close the sale. Fourth could be your payment processes. And the fifth could be onboarding the customer um, for the product so that it can either be, it, it could be a commodity, it could be a service, whatever that is, right? So the 
sales representative needs to be very very clear what the entire customer journey is going to be like and what are the different interventions that he or she needs to bring about for a very very uh, strengthening closure of that particular conversation that they have been having uh, sometimes our sales cycles are quick where we are able to close the sales within two days and sometimes the sales cycles continue for even a month depending on the kind of sales that you're doing is it a b2c format is it a b2b product it all depends depending on that so whatever your product is whatever your customer journey is identifying that and having a very strong training around those processes right third is um using usage of a crm or a tool so i'm i'm quite certain that all of us in our organizations have a certain crm that we're using a uh, customer relation customer relationship management software or a sales software or even sometimes excel sheets right whichever it is whichever product whichever tool that you're using it's very important that our sales representatives are trained on that because that is going to be their bible that is going to be their go to place to understand who are the customers in their funnel what is the journey that has been mapped out for them which stage of the journey are they still in how many sales have we closed we are if we are not able to keep a track of our data we are going to be all over the place right so having a very data driven approach becomes very very important and your sales tools or your crm softwares become very important uh, in this particular aspect so ensuring that you have a good training program which is designed around your crm also is going to be very very helpful for your sales teams to be able to do their jobs well so there is one point in the slide if you see encourage and enable independent work that's how you're going to get your sales teams to be independent as well and not dependent to come every time to the manager asking where do i find this information where do i check this data if you train them well enough and if you enable them uh, they will be able to independently work and very very confidently work as well which then for the managers who are part of this session who are part of our audience today it really frees up your time when because then you can focus on how i can scale up my revenue how i can identify better training programs for my counselors or for my sales representatives at any point of time so how do you make your teams independent will depend on the kind of training programs you have designed for them right so uh, encouraging independent work and a couple of pointers that are also mentioned over here is regarding practical on job training so a buddy mechanism support a lot of companies utilize this and they've seen that it's very very effective that once you have taken your sales representative through uh, the processes to the product training to the crm training now it's time to practice this has all been in theory this has all been in classroom so that's great um how do we know whether they have been able to understand whether they've captured all the information that you've shared with them right so the practical part of the training now becomes very very important wherein either uh you map them to their manager and then they start engaging with customers directly or you map them with a buddy on the floor for a period of say 2 to 3 weeks where they observe where they listen uh which then gives them a lot of more experience and understanding what what actually happens on the sales floor because all this while they've been in the classroom with the trainer understanding all the various concepts but when they actually hit the floor what is the story on really on the ground so when they are with a buddy they have somebody who is there for them who can help them who can guide them so in each of your organizations you may have different ways and different mechanisms to implement this uh, strategy however it's it's a good strategy to have so it can either be the manager becomes the buddy for uh, the sales representative or their peers become their buddy but it it is something that i have seen which works in my past i've seen that it works so this is a strategy that i would like to share with each one of you as well so these are the pointers from my end on uh, uh, training enablement vinit if you'd like to jump in and add any of your thoughts that will be helpful so super so i mean this has been you know like uh... so so extremely well i mean you have covered most of it uh, this was so insightful thank you so thanks a lot for you know like bringing those thoughts onto this because this is going to help all of us i mean okay, i'm sure i mean audience i could also see that there was a lot of thumbs up in between that means uh, so so it validates whatever you know as a speaker you're saying whatever 
is, is being presented here. So, I mean, audience is also engaged. Thanks a lot, audience, for this. Um, we will definitely, you know, like, love Thank to see you. a lot of them. The thumbs up coming in on the screen. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, that, That's the idea. The, the aim of this conversation is that our audience is able to relate to what we are saying and, you know, uh, have a lot of takeaways which they can go back and implement them in their day-to-day uh, uh, -day roles. And the idea is that, uh, and I've seen, and I know that in, uh, in the coming slides, even you're going to be talking about certain pointers, which are not very difficult to implement. These are things which, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, we can actually go back and implement in our uh, jobs. So okay. the idea is to make it as simple as possible for our audience and, you know, make it as uh, relevant for them. True, true. Perfect. So we are moving on to the next slide now where we are saying we're going to be talking about building the sales environment. So build the right culture to build your business faster. So culture is a very, very important word, at least for me in my dictionary, uh, because the environment that you create for your teams speaks volumes about the kind of work that you do and the people working for you and the people that you work with as well. So though we work in a very high pressure environment, I understand sales, like we said, is a very, very high pressure environment. You have targets to be met. Um, you have uh, a lot of questions coming in from different teams. It could be from your leadership team. It could be from your colleagues. It could be from your line managers. A lot of questions, a lot of pressure on targets, numbers, and every day is a hustle where we're trying to meet the numbers that have been given to us. But it's very important that when we are in this environment and we are hustling to get the revenue in, we don't forget to build an environment or a culture which is a healthy culture, which is a healthy environment for our people to work in. So how do you balance out time? Um, how, how do you give people some uh, sense of... Um, a downtime sometimes because we work 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 and we can really stress out really a lot i have seen that happening so how do you give people some downtime to be able to um, catch up on their energy and then come back fresh again how do you create a sense of belonging to the organization again i repeat myself when i say it that till the employee does not feel proud of the organization of the work they're trying to do the difference or the impact that the organization is trying to make to the products that they are offering. Um, it's very difficult to go out and put that passion in your conversation with the customer. So as managers, for managers who are part of this conversation of the audience today, very, very important that how do you keep your teams together? How do you hold your team together in such a high pressure environment that they're willing to give that kind so that your teams are willing to give that kind of effort and energy to be able to meet your numbers, to meet the targets? Because without our team members, there's nothing that the organization is nothing without its employees. So how do you create that right environment? How do you encourage healthy competition? At the end of the day, again, sales is a very uh, competitive environment. And how do you build that healthy environment in your organization where each one of us are motivating the other to do better than what they did yesterday? How each one of us is having each other's backs when we're having a bad day? Because again, we say that sales is like every 10 people you speak with, nine will say no to you and maybe one will say yes to you. So when you're in that phase where every second call or every third call that you're calling and speaking with a customer and saying, hey, I have this amazing product that I like to talk to you about, but the individual on the other side says, no, I'm sorry, I'm busy, call me back later, I'm not interested. How do you not let your morale go down, right? And that's only possible when you have a wonderful environment around you, a very collaborative environment around you. That's when you're going to be able to think that, never mind, let's try again. Let's pick up the phone and call the next customer, right? So that's that's when I say building the sales environment, making it very competitive, but a healthy competition environment so that uh, the organization also achieves its goals of the revenue numbers that we have set and your employees are also happy. So that that's my piece on building the sales environment. So we need if there's anything that you'd like to add, or well, then maybe we can move on to the next slide. We can okay, move on to the next slide, uh, Pearl, but at the same time, uh, just, you know, so, so wanted to I mean, pick up from the last, like last slide itself, that okay, whenever we are building a team, uh, the culture, I mean, once we hire, they're trained, 
then you know imparting a great culture that organizational culture it is the one which which connects the last mile even you know the last person who is there on the floor to the vision of the organization so so whatever organization think that okay say if you wanted to be number one into this particular field the, the last person or or like he should also have the same feeling and it's like he should also work or contribute in the organization and then to to attend to that goal to achieve to that goal or to that vision so so then you know it's like organization i mean if you could see the success of different organizations all it's like culture has played you know a, a, a kind of crucial role there yes very right, true agree with you even here at a brad um, our leadership team makes it a point uh, to connect with all the new employees who join the organization be it the sales team or any other team that is there we have a corporate induction where the leadership team comes and uh, engages with uh, the our new hires currently of course because of uh, the covid-19 situation it's been primarily online however we went sure that that touch point does remain so that uh, anybody like you said the last person to come into the organization hears it from the people who've been in the organization and you know are uh, actually defining the vision and strategy of the organization true true so paul uh, so so thanks a lot for highlighting you know uh, the first two I mean, most important I mean, aspects uh from the perspective of sales enablement i mean hiring on boarding and then training and building in the right culture once right. once we have you know uh the the people who join so their fitment is there into the team then they are on boarded they are well trained now it is it is how you know the managers or or you know the people who have to you know kind of give a direction to them that okay this is how it has to be worked and these are the systems where the sales guys would be okay with working so so if we have to make you know the sales team as a productive team few things as a practice okay, that has to be okay it's like put in so so first is uh, i would just start with you know uh, the tagline okay it's like putting the data to work so data when we say data two two different okay views are there so i'll just give an example uh, so so there are you know hundred of numbers in front of me and where you know the status is invalid on the other side there are hundred numbers where the status is okay valid or or it's like convertible or ready to sell so so that is the importance of data like on the life of everyone who is there in the organization or who is working especially in the sales teams as i uh, i'm sure that most of the sales manager and you know like sales users are there today in the webinar so i would just want to take this opportunity to to kind of you know like put my view points onto those things as well so so first and the foremost thing as per okay my understanding my experience and okay, my learning till now in sales is you know, setting the right expectation so so what i do i mean uh, so as a team i mean i have been okay mentored by great leaders i mean our founders of lead squad the the vps of the lead squad so they have already you know always uh, set up targets and set up you know the expectations of very well so that everybody is is aligned to those goals so so once we set up the targets say for example in sales team if we set up a goal a target that this is the yearly goal or target it may be in terms of revenue it may be in terms of acquisition of new customers it may be in terms of anything and those goals has to be further say i mean broken down into into say half yearly goals then the quarterly goals then monthly goals then the weekly goals okay so, so so now the people who are you know actually working to achieve these goals so once you give them you know an annual target okay this is the annual target it look big and once you break it down into pieces the the weekly target seems to be smaller one and it is you know kind of more doable so it's a way of you know it's a kind of it's a way of the presentation of the data so so now uh, like data has to be viewed and you now it has to be okay like presented in front of the users in such a way that they are able to digest that data it should be kind of you know like consumed by them right and then once these goals are like broken down into the pieces then the tracking of these goals on a weekly on a daily on a monthly on a you know, half yearly basis on a quarterly basis is is like very essential it's because if if we track it 
and in the meantime if something is is going on a wrong track or something is not happening we would be able to fix it but if you don't track it on a weekly basis say for example if we have you know monthly goal it is broken into four pieces so it's like four weeks for three weeks if we have not tracked fourth week it will be very difficult to achieve if something has gone wrong in last two weeks so tracking on a weekly basis i mean tracking of the deals pipeline so whatever it is but the tracking is very important i mean sales is a process so the tracking of efforts is very important i mean outcome is you know so the like outcome is a part of the process it will automatically happen if the efforts are tracked now yeah. uh, so so as a human we have you know the tendency to go to randomness so randomness as in if there are follow ups so as a human being i may miss those follow ups as a manager i have to do a review of 10 people today but you know as a tendency i will think that okay so i'll do eight today i'll do two tomorrow right and it it's because i don't have a system that that okay so like prompts me to do that so once we have you know the right people who are trained on the floor the right system becomes very important it's because system kind of you knows like give us that help it provide that helping hand where a manager or you know the the management would be able to track the efforts of the teams and teams would be able to work on right system to ensure that they get you know kind of ease into their daily task and activities that they do so so it kind of you know automate the whole sales process and i've seen this as an example also with with you know thousands of customers that we are working with today we have kind of okay bring in that you know like that mapping and managing of sales process and we have automated those process to to you know okay, and seen that you know like there has been an increase in the efficiency and the productivity of the teams so the ultimate goal of bringing of training of hiring of of you know uh, taking a system and putting the people to work on that system is to ensure that the efficiency of the process increases the efficiency of the people increases so so that can be done also again as pearl mentioned when those people are well trained on the system so so pearl if you want to add uh, you know anything onto this i would no true i actually uh, very well relate to the first point that you mentioned that uh, when you initially give somebody a target uh, and they hear it in lakhs and crores it, it it you get overwhelmed by saying that how am i going to achieve this number in the short duration span but then when you actually break it down into say a quarter wise month wise week wise and even into a day wise number it becomes much much more achievable right so again this is a learning for uh, our audience over here that when you're looking at it from an individual standpoint or if you're planning targets for your teams have that communication have that two way communication with your team members and as a team member ask your managers that can you break it down into bite sized numbers for me to understand which then makes it much much more achievable for me and i'm able to plan my funnel and pipeline that's sure. a very it's very important where we're saying that you have to continuously track your pipeline it cannot be i did it today and then i do it again after a few days it doesn't work like that you need to be on top of your numbers you need to be on top of your um the list of customers that you have in all organizations we have different ways of categorizing whether the customer is hot warm or cold uh somewhere in other places we say that very highly interested interested or maybe just um, uh, you know just scouting around right now different mechanisms of tagging people in different buckets but it's very important to have that kind of bucketing system in a, you know incorporated in your uh, sales teams where then you're able to prioritize because sometimes we work with volumes of customers especially in b2c the number of people showing interest in the product is very very high how do you differentiate and identify which ones to focus on and which ones not to so when you have these bucketing systems you're able to prioritize and then you're able to close your deals much more faster so yeah so these were my thoughts added to yours uh, venith as well on these pointers great, great thanks a lot thanks a lot for yeah so moving forward uh, you know in this 
so so when i was talking about you know uh, say i mean setting up the process setting up a team then setting it up on a system so now i mean if we have to set it up on a system the, the most important is the regimentation of the work so that means that showing the user only the relevant actionable data say i mean uh, if i'm running a call center or i'm having you know it's like running a field sales team so the so to the call center team i should be showing only the data where they have to work so so i just want to take you know uh, like opportunity to to showcase here how lead squad is helping its its customers to to set up that you know cadence to to set up that regimentation of work uh, we call it as smart views so basically what happens that uh, the manager or the admin would be able to set it up and then the sales user you know, would have different buckets as mentioned by per that in those buckets there will be two different task like for them so say for example i am a call center guy i am a call center agent or i am a field sales guy so my bucket should be whatever of okay, new data that has come to me to work so whatever my pending task is there whatever my follow ups are there so these would be different buckets and every day like once in once i log into my system i know that these are the data points where i have to work i have to finish it off so so there will be no you know uh, this thing that okay pending kind of thing that i have no i can do it tomorrow it's because there is a manager who is sitting and who is going to track this so for the managers the smart views are going to be different so they will be having the whole team you know dashboard that okay uh, whether these guys uh, so they have completed their task or not so vinith has done his okay pending task or not so if vinith say for example if uh, so vinith is working in pearl's team so pearl would be able to see whether vinith is able to complete all his follow up all his tasks all his meetings or not and what is the productivity of vinith so so it becomes very easy and also it uh, to to most of our you know like uh, the the experience that we have with our customer smart views alone has helped a lot to improve the efficiency of the teams so so moving forward uh, to 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 the next slide after this uh, so so apart from the you know it's like call center you know, apart from the field sales like regimentation of the work now these things were for the users or the sales guys right it can be field sales guy it can be a call center guy now for the managers who are you know, handling these teams they should also have access to all the data points like what is happening with my team so where are the efforts okay going in so so those checkpoints or those data points are very essential it means that there should be dashboard for for the you know like managers for admins for the management to go through understand that where the efforts uh, so like what type of focus work is there say if i generate the marketing has generated 1000 inquiries what is happening to those 1000 inquiries how many are you know like converted out of that at what stage they are what is the roi that has been generated till now what is the revenue i'm sure uh, the the you know sales manager being in sales so so one thing that that you know everybody look on a daily basis and also it is tracked you know as a like as a sales manager i also track it that what is the revenue my team has generated so far so so how do we you know like get to that so there you know, should be a dashboard it should be a click away that that i should be able to view all the data points so so that will help uh, to to okay one to track that where are we second also we could do you know some sort of a review the framework say i have a team of say i have a north zone i have a south zone i have a west zone east zone i could see that south is doing good or west is doing good there are certain problems in north or east or there is certain okay problem in in south zone so i would be able to fix it okay right there it's like i could be able to do a review and i would be able to give my feedback there itself so so that will help basically the teams to ensure that the performance is improved there is no you no know, like laid back attitude in the team and the users will also get to know that 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 if you know if my performance is bad it is going to my manager and i will be called for a review uh, you know everything is there or visible so so one is from the feedback Uh, like from this side of it second is also if we could give you know kind of a leaderboard or something where the users can see that out of all the zones okay i'm the highest one so motivation so motivation is a very i mean as a sales person i i get motivated you know like whenever my numbers are high so here as a speaker i will definitely get motivated i mean i was motivated by seeing you know like lot of thumbs up coming in it's because i know 
that, that okay, it's like people are appreciating the work that we are doing. So that appreciation is there. So appreciation always motivates. So if I could see on the dashboard, you know, as the leaderboard, uh, that yes, these are the sales guys who are doing of the top three, top five. So, so that will help basically the teams to motivate and further you know, automatically the, the efficiency, the productivity of the team members increases. Now, okay, moving on to the next slide, uh, we will talk about uh, here, uh, you know, uh, the the feedback management. I mean, the right feedback system. So, so once you know, so two things are there. So, feedback internally, feedback externally. Now, uh, so we'll take again. I'll just take, you know, uh, like one one thirty second. I'll take, and then uh, so so bring uh, the things. I'll try to, you know, like, uh, like like circle back everything from the beginning. So we have hired the right people so after hiring. Okay, they are trained well. After the training, the, the cultural you know, values are important. They they are onto the floor now. They have started working, whether it is a call center you know, setup or it's a process driven or it's a field sales, whatever it is, right? Now there is a system. That, all the resources are also trained on those system. There is a you know, higher option rate as well. So, so teams have started working on to right system. So when we're talking about sales enablement, so right people, the right onboarding, and right training, right systems. But it will not complete until uh, unless we are open to feedback. So feedback internally, say for example, uh, feedback can come if I've given, you know, uh, or a manager had set up a target for his team members, just randomly okay, without understanding or or say without, it's like knowing their abilities. See, everybody is different. So somebody can do uh, you no know, a revenue of say I mean, 50 lakh in a year, but other person would be able to do 30 lakh a year. So as a manager, our job should be to ensure that how do we take this guy to make from 30 to 40 lakh, right? So that's when the, the efficiency is being boosted here. So now we have to understand their problems. We should be able, uh, open to take feedback from them that, okay, I am finding some problem into this system. I'm not able to work on this system. I need some sort of training onto this. I need to work in a different geography. I need to work with a different process. In some cases, it has also happened that, okay, I'm finding sales difficult. So is a person good in marketing or is a person uh, so finding it difficult because he is not aligned or because there are no certain gaps. So we need to identify those gaps, we train him again, put him on the field again. Then definitely there will be no an improvement in the process, the improvement in the person as well, and overall improvement into the system. So, so like, like this is the feedback from the internal stakeholders. So internal stakeholders feedback, I mean, it's like audit is also a very integral part of the feedback management system. So audit of sales teams. So we at Lead Squared, uh, we, we continuously, you know, follow an audit process. It's my experience. And uh, we, we deployed this audit process, I think, uh, some two years back. It's because when, when you know, uh, this, I mean, pandemic hit uh, in 2020 March, uh, so everybody was kind of working remotely. So it was very difficult for us to track and manage. So then we kind of, you know, uh, did some changes into our system, into lead squad system as well. And we helped organizations as well to do those changes to ensure that the remote work can be enabled. Even to the larger teams, even you know, the organizations like who were having from some thousand user sales guys or 2000 like user sales guys. So, so those teams were also kind of, you know, empowered and you know, kind of uh, say, say, I mean, enabled with, with the system to ensure that people are able to work from their home and the efforts, you know, can be tracked. The, the, the system was, you know, efficient and effective to ensure that the productivity was boosted into the system. So, so that is the importance of the feedback. Now, so this was internally. Now externally coming to this, the customers. So most of the organization now follow a practice of taking the feedback from the customers. Now, how do we manage this feedback? It has to be through a system. The system should be able to, to capture the unbiased feedback from the customers as well. 
so so lead squared has you know kind of implemented uh, at lot of places this this feedback management system and that is helping our like lot of organizations to to engage with customers in a better way as as a couple mentioned in the beginning that you know like lot of sales guys so there is you know once they dial they call you know prospect and they hear no they don't get like demotivated they dial out again and the second like person is a yes so those knows through an engagement through a continuous engagement through nurturing through the right feedback management system can also be converted into a yes so 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 this was my point here uh, about the feedback management system so Paul, if you want to anything if you want to add anything here i think we need to really explain this point really really well i really like the concept how you broke it down into the, the internal feedback and the external feedback mechanism very both are very important uh, parts of the system you can say like the wheels of a two wheeler one cannot do without the other right so yes i i just would like to reiterate the same thing that having a very strong feedback mechanism is very very critical uh, because it allows you to make improvements in your system as well it allows you to make improvements in your products it in allows you to identify different and new ways of engaging with your customer because you may be using a strategy which you feel is it is excellent however but when you actually uh, get uh, asked for feedback from your customer you realize that maybe this is not the right way to go about similarly for your internal sales teams as well uh, becomes very important to give them feedback because that's when they are able to understand how best to uh, develop themselves when you have your quarterly appraisals or yearly appraisals and you have these conversations very important to set uh, set clear goals so they understand what they are working towards but along with that it's very important to also tell them how you are going to help them achieve that or if you're having a conversation with your manager and you've understood your goals if you're not clear it's important that you ask your leadership team that how will you help me how will you enable me to achieve these goals and then it's a teamwork where you work together move forward and then the final goal which is to bring in revenue for your organization is achieved so yes we need that would that's something that i want to add over and above what you shared great great yeah so um quick, uh, so so moving on to you no know, like quickly to the next slide uh, that kind of focus summarizes our uh, today's session so uh, you no know, like tricks to close a sales perfectly i mean actually uh, so, so it is the it's like first thing is uh, the right knowledge of the product. I mean, so apart from those four pointers, okay, which I mentioned on the slide, I want to you know uh, speak about four other points, which are not there here on the slide. The first is you no, know, it's like right knowledge about the product. Then, then uh, it's like right knowledge of okay, using the system. Third is uh, understand the market, okay, understanding of the market. The fourth is you know the confidence of a sales guy. Then after you know uh, like know your competitors. Yes, it's very important to understand you know the pricing, the the features, all those things. If it is a B two B or you know if it is a B two C also, you no know, like right knowledge of the product is essential so that you know you would be able to throw or to show that value proposition into your conversation. Then yes, I mean uh, uh, the effectively uh, like. The usage of the CRM effectively is, is very important because if a client has asked me to follow up today at two o'clock, if I'm you no know, I'm using a CRM uh, like platform, it will pop, it will you know, throw a message that hey, I mean today at two o'clock there is a call. So I'll not you know it's like there is no chance that I'm going to miss any of my follow-ups. And if I don't miss any of my follow-ups out of those 10 follow-ups I'm doing. Four will go to deal pipeline out of those four, 50% conversion, two will definitely close. So, so that is going to add to my sales. And setting up a strong follow-up mechanism, as you know, I mentioned. Fourth, the most important, uh, I, I still remember that in the first slide, like Paul mentioned that, you know, like having very strong, like, uh, strong communication and articulating is very important. So through the communication, I mean, See, we, we all know that this is the product A, B, C, D. Now in that A, B, C, D, like how do we differentiate? What is the value proposition I'm bringing for the customer on the table 
through through my communication that that matters the most it's because i'm the representative of the organization so when i'm talking to a customer i'm talking on behalf of my company so so whatever i speak whatever i you know like communicate so, so that is what the customer is going to buy so so communication is a very integral and most crucial part out of this whole picture so yeah i mean so so audience are also kind of you know uh, they they are also acknowledging this yeah that's that's really nice to see i would also like to add um uh, additionally is when we when we say know your competitors that's a very important point i would also like to say that we should also know our customers as sales people till we don't understand our customers i don't think we'll be able to move forward in the sales journey at all right so at upgrad we have uh, we offer education higher education programs um across various domains data digital tech etc and hence we train our cust counselors that when you engage in a conversation with a customer first thing will be to understand the customer's background what the profile is where he or she is coming from what their requirements are and then offer the best solution so and this is a principle that you can use in any industry across any product that till you don't understand that the customer has actually a need for the product that you're offering them the conversation will not go in any relevant direction then it will just be a uh, information share kind your goal as a sales representative is to direct the conversation in the direction of a sale because your goal is to close the sale so early on in the conversation itself it's very important for you to understand the background of your customer what his or her needs are and then offer the best solution that fits his or her requirements so i think one of the important tricks here would be to know your customer as well very important true true pearl uh, so so one more point just wanted to add here that sales is very easy for consultants so when you say i mean it's like consultants so so consultants are the one who who are kind of you know uh, they they understand the problem of the customer they try to stitch a solution which which suits to the customer yeah i mean okay it's like mega sandhu has kind of you know uh, has has mentioned in the chat the similar thing so so it's like every sales person if if they have you know that that consultative nature it becomes easy for them to sell the product it's because i understand the customer well i understand the problem i no i don't have to sell a product rather i have to sell a solution true very right, true vinith because nowadays our customers and and we shouldn't realize and we should know that customers are very intelligent they know what they want right you cannot just call somebody and try to sell a product without even setting context to the conversation because people are very busy these days they're not going to listen to you till you don't have something to hook them on to the conversation Cool. or you know till they don't get that un feeling whether it's in the in person conversation or it's a telephonic conversation till they don't get the vibe from your sales representative that i'm here to understand your need and then offer the best solution they're not going to be willing to listen so it's very important uh, that uh, like you also uh, i see what mega has mentioned that you have to be a consultant you have to understand the background and then offer your product instead of just jumping into the you know into the sale and saying hey do you want to buy this that that has to come later you need to build the relationship first true true so okay okay so kartika uh, if we move to uh, the next slide okay uh, we we have kind of uh, uh, yes i think we have we open, yeah so we are open for the questions i could see uh, so It's like with There are a few well, questions. I would want to pick up a question uh, from Richa Sharma. She is asking that please explain more on the audit of sales team. So sales team audit means uh, for a call center team, if if they are doing say I mean ten calls in a day or hundred calls in a day, so there is an automation which leads quite and set up. In that automation, automatically it will no kind of a case like pick up uh, say two or three calls on uh, randomly. and then there is an audit team so automatically a task get created for the audit team they hear that conversation and pass on their remarks in the in the system itself 
and and that goes as a notification to the user and his manager as well so so if something is you no know, really i mean going bad uh, if a call has not been well or two calls or two you no know, the feedback is like where all improvement is required so it's again a feedback management and it is for the improvement of the users whether it's a call center guy or it is a field sales guy so so there can be you no know, improvement through this audit mechanism so i hope uh, i was able to answer your question paul do you have anything to add to that or can we go to the next one? i think uh, vinith has explained that point well we can move to the next question i see we have a couple of them yes well. we have a couple of questions i will highlight this question from mekha so she asks how do you mentor your team when as a leader you are looked up to um so vinith i'd like to go first on that so mega as a leader uh, you have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders so if you yourself are a leader in your organization you're very right that your team members team members from other teams are always observing you they will always observe how you engage with your employees how you engage with your team members uh, are you approachable are you available when they need them it's very easy to say i'm a leader i have a team of 50 people you know and i have this experience and all of that but when it actually comes down to you being around for them are you there are you able to offer solutions to the problems that they are facing are you enabling them to be a better version of themselves it could be just by talking to them by giving them opportunities to upskill themselves to grow in the organization sometimes i've seen sometimes that um you know if you have somebody in your team you're not very happy if they want to switch a role or move into another team um because sometimes you believe that oh you work so hard with this individual you've trained him or her and now they want to leave and uh, maybe join another organization or move to another team in the organization but i personally believe that if you have really worked hard with somebody and groomed them to a certain level then you need to give them the freedom to make their choice that whether they would like to explore another opportunity if they are seeing growth over there i'm not saying that we should not make an effort to retain somebody we should definitely do that but as a leader you want that person to grow when they are in your organization and when they're not in your organization when they are in your team and not in your team as well right so for me that is very important that all of these parameters um uh, i well taken care of that how do you help your team members to become well rounded successful individuals wherever they are in life because then that's when they'll always remember you as well so that's that's my thought on that question uh vinith i'm sure everybody would love to hear from you what your thoughts as well no no you have you know it's like brought in so i mean beautifully this is this is what uh, you know it's like most of uh, the the leaders are looked up uh, and and you know uh, the people i mean the team members who are there with you if if uh, they they always you know have this kind of expectation from the leaders that that like whenever it is required and from any perspective it's not only you know like professionally also i mean a lot of times it happens that you know uh, so there are certain you know, like personal issues but as a leader if if they are i mean if your team is is kind of like open and they can come to you speak to you about their problems so that, that, that's what is is you no know, kind of required and and that are no ultimately solve that problem right and uh, it, it it's a very common saying that a lot of you we must have heard also that people don't leave organizations they leave team leaders right so uh, th that that's something that i've learned in in my career as well and i've seen that for and that is a very important part for me as an employee as well that Who, what are the kind of people around me what are the people that i'm working with if i have the right kind of people around me then it doesn't matter everything is possible you know so that that's how so mega if you're a leader i'm sure you're doing a great job already and i really hope that some of our thoughts is something that you can go back and incorporate as well in your respective team thank you pearl and vinit beautifully answered you couldn't have done a better job i guess so yeah we can take up one more question it's from shanmita she asks our sales enablement and sales engagement the same what should my team work on uh, so so i'll take that up for if no, uh, please so, go ahead so so shanmita uh, since uh, 
sales enablement is basically you know empowering your team right and that empowerment can happen uh, through through training through through providing them the right guidance the right system the right communication sales engagement if you're talking internally to our own members so there i mean the feedback that we discussed was a part of engagement so feedback internally then this this audit so audit is also kind of sales engagement it's because i wanted my team members to improve so like all these steps i take to ensure that there is a continuous improvement in my team members so that's engagement for me that's a sales engagement and no and so whatever i deploy from a system perspective from a tool perspective from a knowledge perspective so so all that help to to enable the sales so so pearl have I mean, any thought on this or if you want to know like add on onto this no i think you've uh, handled that beautifully as well vinith i think it was to the point and answered well nothing more to add from my side thank you um i know we are we've crossed our time limit but would you be willing to take up one more question is that okay yeah for uh, sure yeah, absolutely all right we have a question uh from likahe i'm not sure if i'm lakahe i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing it mm-hmm. right he I asked i i had a question taking into account you both belong to different kinds of sales b2b and b2c can you both talk about how the culture of the organization changes mm, so um for me if my point of view on this is that it does not matter whether it is b2b or b2c sales all right your product may be different your processes may be different the way you approach it may be different but i think culture is at an organization level so even at abgrad we have b2c teams and we have b2b teams as well but for us it's very clear that the culture we build in the organization needs to be common across where we are all following the same framework we have the same thoughts we are all very clear on how we want to take abgrad as an organization forward so that would be my point of view that uh, culture does not for me does not change whether it is b2b or b2c yes the processes and the way you approach a b2b sale would definitely change from how you approach a b2c sale but culture is at an organization level for me yes it would you like to add something just just one line uh, whether it is you know a b2b process or a b2c i mean uh, the the closer it's same the process can different you no know, it can differ where uh, the the sales cycle can be shorter for a b2c where the sales cycle can be you know kind of longer for a b2b but the pride of closing a customer it's same i mean whether it is b2b or b2c i couldn't agree more so i think with that we can end the session if that's One fine with the speakers last question uh, so Karthika, sure we can we have time then we can take that yeah. also I mean, one last question where okay so like kashish bhatia has mentioned uh, what is your opinion uh, so what is your opinion does a good sales workflow consist of consist of so Paul, i can take up that question if you please go ahead. yes vinay please so so kashish a good uh, you know so the sales workflow it it start from when we generate an inquiry so now that process has to be well defined that how do we generate an inquiry whether to outbound to inbound so which are the channels once that inquiry is generated automatically should be distributed to the people who has to work on that inquiry okay then after that distribution like those people should be accountable like by the system to work on that inquiry it means there has to be automated task okay and the system should be able to check whether they have you know like completed that task or not and once it is done again if it is not engaged it should move to a different bucket of marketing where the marketing team can you know kind of forget like plan campaigns around those in data points so ultimately we have to ensure that it keeps so once the data point is entered in the system it should be well engaged and well nurtured and the experience uh, It's like whether they they buy your product or not, but the experience or they carry should be awesome. Paul, would you like to add something to that? 
Um, no, I think Vinita has explained it uh, really well. It's it's ensuring basically the entire customer journey is well taken care of. And all the interventions that you do in order to ensure that you're able to take the customer from the inquiry stage to the closure stage is what would constitute a good sales workflow. All right, agreed, definitely. I think we've taken up almost all the questions that uh, our audience had. Um, yeah, so I think we can end that session with that because we've already crossed our time limit. It was supposed to be an hour. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much, both the speakers. It was a wonderful uh, session. It was very insightful. I certainly learned a lot in this session. And I'm sure all of our audience also learned a lot from this session. And thank you so much to the audience. Everyone was very engaging and the speakers also felt that that was a great thing to do. So yeah, these are the type of audience we are looking forward to. So thank you so much to everyone who joined. Thank you so much, Pearl. Thank you so much, Vineet, and everyone who organized this webinar also. And with that, I think it's a wrap. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Kartika. Thanks, Pearl. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye.